It's glamping Nano Remo time. No, I did not just have a stroke. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to day one of what I'm calling glamping Nano Remo. Uh, if you have not watched my video on what I plan to do for camp and why the heck I'm calling it that, uh, I will link that. I don't know, is it up here? Is it up here? You guessed in a card. You can watch it after this video, um, you know, just to get caught up on things. But basically, I'm doing the opposite of camp and that's why I'm saying Remo. No, I'm not pronouncing the R I wrong. I'm saying R E because I'm going to be reading most of camp I am using this month to level up in my writing skills so that I can stop using that as an excuse to not work on my book so that once camp is over I'm going to like tell myself that I am prepared enough to fix what I need to fix and I'm hoping that like a lot of these books have like little like worksheet the question thingies that I'm gonna use to apply to some of the aspects of my book that I'm struggling with to try to help and fix and problem solve so that in August I'm good to go. I'm going to be reading two craft books and doing two master classes. So the first craft book I want to read and finish uh, is Story Genius. So I'm giving myself about eight days approximately for each of these things, which if you do the math right, that's 32 days. There's only 31 in July. So obviously one of those hopefully is going to take less than eight days. Um, but I'm starting with Story Genius. So I am on page 27 and there's like 267. So what's that math? So there's 240 pages. Ooh, that, that's good math for eight. So in order to get this done in eight days, I would need to get um, 30 pages read a day. So by the end of today, I need to be at like uh, 57. Um, if I did that math wrong, I don't think I did, but if I did, don't tell me, okay? Let me just think I'm good at math, okay? I have very little going for me these days. Um, so I'm going to attempt to get to page 57. Now I'm starting camp... <laughs> par for the course uh late it is um 9 45 p.m but you know i worked today and then unsolved mysteries came on to netflix today so we watched one and a half episodes but then had to cut the second episode um we had to stop it because i was like starting to fall asleep so i took a nap and then got up and we had to do some other stuff you don't care about my day um you don't care about a recap of the day right but we're working on a toy wall which <laughs> Um, I'll show you maybe in a different vlog, not right now because it's still like unfinished, but basically um, my in-laws are selling their family home that they've had for over 30 years and um, they started to decide to do that right around the time of quarantine and so they came to stay with us um, in our home out here in the country. We have a pretty big home. It's plenty big for them um and they're staying with us and my husband and my father-in-law have been working on fixing up the family home uh in downtown so that they can sell it so we have had to it's been months and months of them staying here which is fine though because this house is big enough like i said but we've had to do some rearranging and so um what we're doing is we basically cut the house in half like where the kitchen is on one side of the house there is a bathroom and bedrooms and um, a living room and then on the other side because the kitchen's in the middle of the house there's a, a, another living room uh and other bedrooms and um and bathrooms so they basically have that half of the house and we have this half of the house um and we share the kitchen but the kitchen is big enough that we even have our own fridges and stuff so that's why i said it's like pr plenty big uh, for all of us to share however because we've cut our house in half we are rearranging and our bedroom is so big you guys um it's as big as um, our old apartment in california so um we are changing our bedroom into a bedroom slash studio um because i'm doing some filming things and then also my husband is uh working on starting um, a business and so we are using part of the room for that and that is where the toy wall comes in because i do have a toy channel and also we're doing some other things with that and i have a million toys so we have one wall that we've dedicated that i'm trying to get a bunch of my toys on so that was a long way to tell you about my toy wall um, and then one of the other rooms we are going to turn into a studio because we are a different stu kind of studio because we are going to be starting another business in that. But that's for another time. You're here for my glamping Nano Remo vlogs. But yeah, so maybe I'll be showing some of that during these vlogs um, just so you don't always just see me sitting here talking about books. Um, but for today, I don't want to show you anything because it's super a mess. But that's what I was doing a lot of the evening. That was my point. That was my point. Was That's why I hadn't started yet because... Which, 
between some unsolved mysteries and some napping and dinner and then trying to pull some toys out of storage to work on the toy wall um I haven't had a chance to start, but it is now almost 10 p.m. and I'm gonna try to get these 50, at least 50 pages in. I'm really excited about this one, guys. I know that there's a lot of mixed feelings about Story Genius, but I'm liking it so far. I really like um, Lisa Cron, uh, Crone, however you say it. Uh, her stuff kind of makes sense to me in Wired for Story, so I'm really thinking that this is going to help with some of the um, structure stuff I'm having issues with, especially the fun and game section. I'm really hoping this will help. So I'm gonna check back in once I hit my 50 pages or so and let you know any little nuggets or what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, and I'll get back to you. So stay tuned. Oh my gosh, this is so true already. Uh, she's totally calling me on some BS. <laughs> Okay guys, it's about an hour later and I just finished reading the 30 pages. I'm not going to read any extra tonight um, just because it's already late and I want to finish that episode of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> but this book is really good, you guys. I mean, there was some stuff that I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know, like I get what she was saying, but I didn't like 100% agree or I've read other books that would say the contrary, but some of the stuff I felt very like called out <laughs> so I really like that um there were some really good quotes in here I should have like had them ready oh there's this Joan Didion one that I really like that says that I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking what I'm looking at what I see and what it means what I want and what I fear so like the idea of writing so that you understand yourself better in the world better so I really like that quote a lot so um, there's a lot of good stuff in here I don't want to give too much away because I will review the book when I'm done um, but so far I'm really liking it I really just kind of went through the first section which was like coming up with like your premise and kind of going beyond this idea of like a what if like I think that's a like a myth we hear all the time that you need to have like this what if but she's kind of takes that and like expands on it to explain that like you can't just deal with like a what if you have to go you have to do more than that and i just started the section where she's talking about your protagonist and how to sort of flush that out um so yeah so so far so good got my 30 pages in i am on track day one chick check chick i said chick check Okay, you get it. You get the point. But now I'm going to finish the Unsolved Mystery episode. It's the one about the UFOs and the Berkshires, uh, which I've been to the Ber Berkshires before. It's beautiful. I didn't know that there were UFO encounters there. I'd have been a little more aware of my surroundings if I'd known. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm going to finish that, and I'll be back tomorrow, and maybe, hopefully, I'll have a finished toy wall to show you. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Well, that's it for night one. Good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is day two of Camp Nano. I have to do this really quick because we're about to go live in two minutes. Um, as you can see, I've been working on my toy wall today. I'll show you that maybe later. Um, I'm super obsessed, but also all my stuff doesn't fit on it, so I gotta find other places in our room to put my stuff. So anyway, I'm really excited about that. We're about to go live on Kevin's channel, and I'm going to be working on Story Genius. So I'm excited for that, and I'm excited to see everyone in the live chat. So. Yeah, I just wanted to introduce you to day two, and now I'm gonna go live. Let me show Kevy. We are ready to rock and roll. Although I have the volume all the way down so you can't hear him, you can just see him dancing. And Falcor is uh, chewing on himself, if you can hear that. So, all right, and now he's choking on his own hair. And now, and now he's choking on his own hair. All right, guys, I'm gonna go, and uh, I'll maybe catch in during one of the sprints. Catch in, touch in, catch. I'll do something during one of the sprints, maybe. If not, I'll talk to you afterwards. All right. I'll be back in a bit. Hey guys, just finished up with the live stream. I did pretty good. I got distracted during some of the sprints, but I managed to read um, from page 58 to 74. And I need to get to 87 tonight. So I got about, um, what is that, like 13, 14 pages still to reach tonight. So that should be, oh, I'm like having the hiccups or something. So like that shouldn't be a problem. I'm still gonna get that finished tonight. Um, and then I need to read some of Kevin's book. <laughs> I gotta get on that. So yeah. Um, 
So I'm going to do that. And then I also have not filmed my video yet because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to do for tomorrow. Um, so I still have to film that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to film that tonight or if I'm going to wait and um, film it in the morning. But it does need to go up tomorrow. So I'm trying to stay on a consistent schedule of every Tuesday and Friday at 1 p.m. So look how much like longer that one is like a ride. It. They're like kind of short ones. I don't really like it like that. Anyway, you don't care. So I'm not sure if I'm going to film that tonight or not. I gotta think about it. I gotta think on it because it's already 10.06. But I don't work tomorrow, so, you know. And I look okay, right? I mean, I look old. But, I mean, what else is new? I have not, because I have not gone to my hairdresser to do my roots. I've been too scared to do my own roots. I should just do my own roots. But, you know. So I got this. <laughs> So, anyway, I told you guys about my toy wall. I'm going to show you a little bit of my toy wall real quick. It's not done. We're still tweaking some things. I still have some other toys that I need to, like, like, all my Donatellas. I don't have anywhere to put them yet because I ran out of room. And I had to move my bigger Tokidoki. So, let me show you my toy wall because I'm really excited. Okay, so here's the toy wall. So, I have some of my Tokidokis here and here and here. Aren't they so cute? And then I got some Funkos. I need to wash that bat box. So we got some Disney Funkos on the top and the Marvel down at the bottom. Except for a little Gudetama and the Great Gazoo. If you know where the Great Gazoo is from, comment down below. Let me know. And then the top row and above is our Star Wars ones. So I'm really excited. If you look like kind of farther back, you can see it. Isn't that cute? I love it so much. I missed my toys. Is this crooked? I think it's crooked. Who cares? Because I'm about to like end this day's clip. Um, so yeah. So I don't know. I'm, cause I'm probably just gonna read these last ten pages in bed. I might update you. If not, you might not see me until tomorrow. But yeah, that was my toy wall. It's super cute. I'm obsessed. Love it. And uh, yeah, I'll show you some more of my room as we're slowly getting some other things put up because we thought we were moving. <laughs> so everything was packed. We were supposed to move in January back to California with COVID and everything going on. Um, that is on hiatus. And it's looking like at the earliest it'll be next year. So might as well unpack and uh, get settled for a little bit. So, all right, guys. I am probably going to call that a night for tonight. So I will check back in at some point, either maybe tonight, but most likely tomorrow. But so far, I'm on track. And if as long as I get these 10 pages, I'm still on track. So. All right, see you in a bit. Oh, hey guys. Sorry, was that exciting? So you all right then. Um, it is day three. Just realized my air conditioner is on. It's probably been on some other clips. Hopefully it's not too loud. I'll die if I have to turn it off, so sorry. We'll try to, you know, just ignore that. It is around noon. I've been up for a few hours now since like nine, but I've just been kind of lazy, obviously. I slept in the shirt I was wearing yesterday, so don't judge me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I actually fell asleep before I was able to read those last 10 pages. So I, cause we watched a little bit more of Warrior Nun last night and then when I went to go read this, I fell asleep, so. Uh, I'm trying to finish that up now. I've read some of it, so I just have a little bit left to be caught up for yesterday, so I guess I'm technically behind. But then I will read another 30 pages for today, and then hopefully that will be good, and I'll be all caught up. I also had to um, record a video last night, so that was another reason. And now I am trading off. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm suddenly yawning. Between reading more of this and watching some other two videos, and um, Aaron ran to the store to get some stuff for the 4th of July. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, battery went dead. Where was I? I think I was just saying that I need to get caught up on these 10 pages so that I can start working on the pages I need to read for today. I just had a brilliant idea when I was switching out the um, batteries naturally. I'm a brilliant person, so of course I have brilliant ideas. Um, I think um, I'm going to watch some live streams that I've recently missed to do the reading during the sprints. So I think Brooke actually did one this morning that I slept through and was not ready to be awake yet. Um, Falkor is barking. Ugh. 
But yeah, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to watch that and do the reading during the sprints because I'm honestly just kind of having a hard time at the moment, like getting into the reading. I mean, the book's really good, you guys. I didn't even mention like what I'm reading about last night. Uh, I'm in the character section. A lot of this stuff I'm already doing, but it's definitely putting some things in perspective that I hadn't thought about and I'm really liking it so far. So anyway, I think I'm going to watch uh, Brooke's live stream and do some more reading. Is that Taylor Swift? Because when you're 15 and somebody tells you they love you, you believe it. Okay, just finished the first 15 minute sprint and I got all the way to page 86 out of 87. That was supposed to get finished for yesterday. I think I'm a little crooked, but you know, bear with me. Oh, there's some laundry I gotta put away. Fun times. So I did start taking some notes though. That's kind of what got me for not, uh, got me for not. Sometimes I talk too fast and like my words just get all bleh. Um, there were some key questions she really wants you to ask. She wants you to do some like work that I don't wanna do quite this moment I need to think about them and separate my time to do that but I started writing them in this notebook this is a beautiful notebook that my husband got me when he was in California in January when he was scoping out things for us to move which didn't happen but anyway we're not gonna talk about that um so um this is like an artist rendition of Jack and Sally um because I absolutely love them Nightmare Before Christmas my favorite ever it's like mine and my husband's movie we are Jack and Sally now and forever um truly meant to be right okay i had to finish the whole sappy uh quote thing so anyway started making some notes for myself of things i want to think about and talk about because again if you remember i'm reading these craft books to fix some things that are in beware of monsters that i just think these are not like uh, they're more like just things i can apply in revisions so that these scenes and these ideas and these things are just more like fine-tuned it's like tuned <laughs> tuned so it's like you know when you're looking at something and it's like there and it's fuzzy but if you just adjust a little bit it's just going to refine that it's going to fine tune it and you're going to see the picture much clearer that's what i'm trying to work on this month so that i can jump in in august and feel confident and ready how to fix it what to fix what to do that kind of stuff like i'm like the mad scientist like i'm like reading and making notes and my hair is just flying everywhere and being crazy all right, anyway, um, I'm gonna take this short little break uh, while Brooke talks, and then I'm gonna go jump back in and get some more rain done before Aaron comes home with lunch. <laughs> it's arriving Panda Express, and I haven't had it in like over a month, so I'm excited. Okay, um, well over a month, maybe, t maybe two months, but it doesn't matter, you don't care, you don't care. So, all right, I'll be back after uh, the next sprint. Okay guys, so I paused the live stream because I just got caught up to where I was supposed to be um, as of last night and uh, I wrote down a few more notes. I need to go back because I, I should have been writing notes earlier and write down some more notes from earlier, but I'll do that uh, after I think I'm done with the reading for today because um, I don't want to lose momentum, but I should have mentioned a couple of the things that I was writing down. I just don't want to give too much away because I am going to like fully review this, but um, really it's like focusing on the what does your character want. Like I know what my character wants. I know what the external and internal plot like are like the wants and needs um like based on um save the cat kind of emphasizes that but this is just kind of wording it different this is what i was talking about like the sort of refining so like what does she want what fear is keeping her from achieving it i kind of like the way that's framed um what is the very worst thing that could happen i really like that question um and finding a way to like incorporate that uh and what misbelief does she have and that is like the fatal flaw like not like oh she picks her nose um but rather like what misbelief is she current misbelief is she currently holding that is going to ultimately be her fatal flaw um and then uh, having like her want or need or whatever it needs to be like a deep-seated uh desire and then she needs to have like a misheld belief that's like preventing that. So uh, I wrote that down. I need to think about that. And I'm going to use that sort of framing to help refine my want and need to make that clearer in the beginning um, and change a little th a few things in my beginning. So yeah, but now I'm going to jump into the next section where we're kind of talking about like your character's worldview and like their perspective um and how like they see the world and interpret the world so that's what i'm reading next all right i'll let you know in a little bit how it's going hey guys okay sorry i'm not like done but i just need to jump in here because this 
this right here is so important like not just in writing but in like a life level that I just kind of want to point it out um, this is something that when I was in graduate school we discussed like so much like ad nauseum and it really like affects the way I think about the world um, when I think about like important topics um, I hadn't really like applied it as much in my writing as I think I should but it's just so so important um, when she's talking about worldview, like the worldview of your character, not POV as in like first or third, but like the way they see the world, right? She talks about that this is always objective. This is always based on your own experiences, the way that you were taught and learned and experienced things your whole life. And so she says meaning is always subjective. So even when we're looking at something that is objective, uh, an objective thing, we are imbibing, you know, or imbuing, um, imbibing we're drinking um we're, we're putting meaning is what i'm trying to say uh into something it means something different to us than other people i think this is so important like when you're thinking about relationships too um it's something that i really had to had have had to work on and continue to work on in my relationships both family and uh my love you know relationship with my husband um my friends things like that so it's that we see things differently and interpret things differently and put meaning into things differently than other people and we have to try to understand other people's worldviews to understand where they're coming from and why they could interpret something different um differently than when we do so anyway she says we ascribe meaning to everything home clouds love and the fact that our significant other forgot our birthday again based on one thing only what our personal experience has taught us that those things signify and therefore what we can expect of them so this is why i hate when people say like oh well he did this thing and that like must mean this like you kind of need to know that person to know if that actually means something um and understand their worldview and you can't always assume that people's worldview is the same as your own um and i think that that's so profound to really think about your character's world view like i feel like i did do this to some extent but i don't know that i've done it to the extent that it's necessary so yeah i just wanted to share that with you because i really just it kind of stopped me in my tracks um thinking about it so i wanted to share that with you guys all right back to the book okay sorry sorry one more thing about this point because it was on the very next page so she gives this example of okay let me just tell you the example okay, i don't want to give away too much of this book but this is so important you guys when thinking about our characters like it's so important she says um here's like an exercise you can do in a writing workshop so uh, think of an image right so she says a barking dog okay think of that image right and she says she got here are three examples of answers one person said i saw the huge pit bull with a sharp yellow teeth who lunged at me when i was coming home from school in my gingham pinafore when i was six okay that's what they think of when they think of a barking dog somebody else says i saw my old basset hound fred who always barked his head off and did a clumsy little happy dance when i came home from work oh how i miss that dog and the third person said, I saw my neighbor's uh, Jack Russell Terrier barks all damn night. I haven't slept in weeks. I'm behind at work. I keep fighting with my wife. Oops, did I say that out loud? So the point is, is that everyone sees a different image when they're thinking of a barking dog, right? So some of us see a German Shepherd that's terrifying. Some see a pampered Pomeranian on a silk pillow. Others see a tail wagging mutt who barks in delight. And notice that it's not just the image that we see different. It's also how that image makes us feel what we do in response and how it's impacted our life not to mention our belief system so why this is so important when you're thinking about your character is your character is going to react to every situation every image every instance everything that comes up based on their world view their past experiences everything is going to and i think that we're already kind of doing this in our books without thinking right like oh this is how my character reacts to this but i think that if we really want to make this stronger more authentic more refined it's important to know that worldview going in <laughs> the beeping <laughs> from the live stream know that going in and really be thinking every time like why would my character react this way like does this align with the worldview in which i've set up for that character does that make sense it makes sense to me all right i'm gonna get back to the book okay guys so i'm taking a little break from reading um i stopped on page like 91 i think i have to get to uh 117 
fuck we're snoring. Uh, 117 for today. And, um, but the Babysitter's Club premiered today on Netflix. So I know, God, my hair is just so crazy, you guys. Um, I know Aaron's not really going to like want to watch it. So I'm going to try to get some of it in because I've really been waiting. I'm so excited for it. Babysitter Club was the first series of books I ever read in my whole life. And I'm just like obsessed. So anyway, um, I'm going to watch some of that before he gets home because I don't want to wait. I've been waiting for so long. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to catch a little bit of that before he gets home. And then I'll probably get back to reading later. And I still got to read some of Kevin's book. And then tonight we are going to watch um, Hamilton with um, when we have dinner. And uh, we're going to watch it with my mother-in-law and father-in-law. So I'm excited for that tonight too. So lots of good stuff happening this weekend. But yeah, I need a little break from the reading. I'm going to watch a little Babysitter's Club. And uh, yeah. Baby Sanders Club. Love it. Mm, can't wait. I was walking home from school with my best friend, Marianne Spear. All right, guys. So we are <laughs> in the car. Um, Hello. Got Aaron and some dog. I was going to say doggies and dogies, and it just came out. Um, I watched the first three episodes of Baby Sanders Club. Obsessed already. Also cried already. So, anyway. <laughs> So now we are about to just have a little leisurely drive, stop by the ABC store to get some alcohol for tomorrow, and let the doggies hang their heads out the windows. Yep. Lisey's already getting a head start. Yep. So. She loves it. Away we go. Maybe you're asking yourself, I've got writer's block. What do I do? Take <laughs> shots of this. <laughs> and then you'll write. It may not be good, but you'll definitely be writing something. Side note, Patron is not sponsoring this video. But if you want to, you don't have to give us any money. Just give us some of this. Just send us like one of those big bottles, like at the uh, like at the Vegas clubs, you know, the really big ones. All right, guys, we are now. Um, yeah, I just chose to just not even do my hair at all today. If you were wondering, also something is wrong with my camera that it keeps going in and out of focus. We're gonna try to fix it, so I apologize for that. But um, we are back now, and I am going to try to finish up what I need to get read for today. I think it's like twenty some pages, so that I can watch Hamilton tonight and hang out with the hubby. Um, and yeah, so I need to get that done. But first, Aaron brought me cookie cake. Fourth of July cookie cake. So I'm going to eat some of that while I read. No, you cannot have any Falks. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys. I'm on page 110. I'm supposed to be reading to 117 today. I was going to make myself finish this before I watched Hamilton. But then my mom just sent me like a parody of the like Hamilton medley songs about wearing a mask. And it was so good. But now I really want to watch the movie. So I'm going to take a break. Because this is like some heavy stuff, you guys. And I'm just like... Yeah, I'm really liking the book. So anyway, um, we're going to go uh, get some drinks and watch some Hamilton. And uh, yeah, I'm like super excited. Ah, can't wait to watch it. Hey guys, uh, I'm back. We just finished Hamilton. I'm a little red face, a lot of crying. Even though I've heard the songs a million times, it's way different seeing it um, on TV. So... Um, yeah, but it was like amazing, of course, way better even than just listening to the songs. Um, so yeah, I feel like very emotionally exhausted, but, um, I have about seven pages left that I need to finish. So I'm going to get that done, um, tonight so that I can stay on track because I'm notorious for losing and not keeping goals. <laughs> so I'm going to try really hard to stick with this one. So, um, yeah, if you haven't watched Hamilton yet and you have Disney Plus, highly, highly, highly recommend. Try to be around people that you don't mind crying around. Uh, I didn't really, I was with my in-laws, so I didn't want to cry too much, so I had to like pull my shirt up and plug my nose <laughs> during Quiet of Town and the end so that I wouldn't like audibly sob. So there was one time where there was a hitch when I thought someone heard me. 
<laughs> and I looked over and nobody did. So, um, or if they did, they pretended that they didn't. So, um, you know, but anyway, all right, I'm going to read this and, uh, hopefully this will help me get rid of all these feelings of sadness and regret and foreboding. So, <laughs> all right, I'll be back. Lighting is not great. <laughs> Happy 4th of July, or as they say, I think it was in Little Rascals, 4th of the lie. That actually feels a little more accurate these days. This lighting, not great, but we'll move on. Um, so it is, I guess, brunch time. It's around 2.30. I've been up for a few hours. Um, on days that I don't have to work, I like to lay in bed for hours when I wake up. Just look at my phone and do whatever. Um, I fell asleep last night, finishing up the last of the, <laughs> hello gnat in my face um i woke up uh i mean i fell asleep like trying to finish up those pages so when i woke up this morning i went ahead and finished it and i have a lot to say about that section that i want to share with you guys but my husband just finished making fourth of july pancakes so pancakes are literally one of my favorite foods of all time and yes i only eat them with butter not syrup i know i'm weird i actually like syrup i just don't like it on pancakes i just like it sometimes in very small amounts because it's so sugary and I just don't have a lot big sweet tooth um, I like to like dip it but hardly ever pancakes I just love butter anyway and also mimosas oh my god heaven on earth so I'm gonna have my mimosa and I'm going to eat my pancakes and a little bit later I'm gonna get back into the book and I'll update you guys with some thoughts I have because I have some thoughts guys good ones good ones but i want to share some stuff so just wanted to just say hello though and dive into my pancakes and my mimosa and um i'll be back later hey guys um day four is i guess technically over um it's like 1 30 a.m but i haven't been to sleep yet so day four is not over over for me yet um so i'm gonna um sort of sum up uh, the rest of the day for you. We were playing Mario Kart and then uh, we made dinner and had that. So we had some chicken and burgers and corn on the cob and baked potato and some homemade cheesecake, which was really good. And um, I feel like that was it that I can think of. Um, so yeah, so we had that and then Aaron and I did our tradition, which is watching um, Independence Day. So we watched that, which was so good. And then um, after that, I wanted to finish uh, reading what I needed to read in this section for today, which I just got done doing. So I'm all caught up. So I'm on track still for camp. Um, and I'm on like, I'm in section three of this book, which is the last section. Um, about, I have about a hundred pages left in the book. So what's interesting is it's just now finishing talking about what all you should do before you start writing the book. And it's not really talking about outlining. It's more just like character work that you should be doing to sort of understand and to help figure out your character and your plot. I mean, and your like the point of the book, what, like what happens before the book starts, why is it starting here, like all of this like early on work. And I'm gonna say that it has really, really got me thinking about my book and I feel like a lot of the stuff that it's putting forward is making me realize what my book was missing and why why the some of the plot stuff was just not working even though i had all the plots technically plotted out um uh, especially like according to save the cat they just felt like events kind of happening interchangeably they could be moved anywhere which i did move them several times and it just didn't feel like there was um, like trajectory or like building on things it was just like oh, it's like, here's these events that they all just kind of happen. And it felt like this. And it just wasn't really working and I couldn't figure out why. And now after reading the first half of this book, I know why. Um, I know what I need to do. But at the same time, it's a little overwhelming because I've been writing this book now for like a year and a half, this, this go around. And I feel like it needs a complete overhaul but then it doesn't because like I can still use all of the plot points 
but like the undercurrent of the book is now completely different so like motivation worldview like just so much like it's hard to explain if you haven't read the book like what I mean but maybe you do um even if you haven't I just like I can still use everything I have but like at the same time I have to change everything I have does that make sense to anyone so anyway what I'm trying to say is I'm just like a little overwhelmed by that like on the on like the plus side like I know now exactly what I need to do and I've already been thinking about some of this stuff and it really gives you like really clear things that I think like I think she explicates it really well and I really think I'm gonna like if I sit down and do these things she says I think it's really going to help me but then I'm also just kind of like overwhelmed at like essentially going back to the drawing board and sitting down and trying to like figure like do more like work towards the book rather than just revising because I'm already in my revision rewriting like all of act three and everything after the midpoint and uh now i'm this is gonna essentially make me have to rewrite the beginning and <laughs> rework all of my all of my beginning of act two so fun and games that's what i'll show you guys late so basically what that means is everything's being rewritten rather than just revised and really just like the facts of the plot points will be the same and some aspects of it but like all the internal thought all the motivation all the trajectory all the worldview all that stuff just needs to be so different and so i'm just feeling a little overwhelmed and i'm just kind of like when do i start doing that do i start doing that now do i wait till the end of the month um do i take a break after this month and work on a different project to like give myself a little bit of a break i just i don't know i don't know what to do with this information like i felt like reading these books and doing these things was going to help me like move forward and it I think it's going to but I'm also just overwhelmed at the same time about how to move forward and it's just like I don't know maybe it's like late at night and I'm just like kind of having like a moment but it's just like I I know sometimes I come off really flippant about my writing and I think it's just my way of dealing with stuff because I have a lot of like internal hurdles that prevent me from getting things done the way I'd like and the way they should be done and in a timely fashion um I have external hurdles too but I'm just saying like so anyway so I make jokes and I try to be honest about it and act like you know very accepting but on the inside I'm really just kind of upset and I gave up a lot to be a writer or to try to be a writer like I gave up a career that I worked really hard on um on a degree that I worked really hard on and um you know most of you know this but it's just like I could have just finished my dissertation you know I could have just spent the two years uh that I had left to finish writing that book and I could have been a professor and I could have just been living a very different life than I'm living right now um but I didn't because as I started to work on that dissertation, I realized that wasn't the kind of stuff I wanted to be writing. I didn't want to spend my t my life writing academic work. I didn't want to spend my life talking about other people's books. Um, I wanted to spend my life writing my own rather than writing books about other people's books. Like I wanted to be the one that people were talking about and reading and writing books about and examining. And so anyway, I gave up a lot. My family gave up a lot for it, you know? I don't wanna to be too upset with this, but we completely changed our lives and our future plans and it was really hard. But we did it because this means a lot to me and it was what I wanted and so when I hit these roadblocks when I see like when I feel like what I've been doing is like in the wrong direction or like it's gonna take me that much longer I know it's part of the journey and I know it's what I need but like my birthday's coming up you know and I'm gonna be 37 this month and it's just like I don't know I just need to go to sleep I'm just a little upset 
little overwhelmed and um yeah so anyway i wanted to end this vlog on on this day so i hate that this is like how i'm ending it you know um I'm, I'm happy i'm happy that i'm learning and you know people have spent years working on their craft and i didn't because i was working towards something else so i'm behind but i'm trying to catch up and it is worth it but i just have to keep my eye on the prize and stay motivated and having this channel and having you guys my friends um support me and just you know you guys keep me going so anyway i'm gonna stop being so sappy and get some sleep and uh happy fourth of july sorry uh that this ended on a sad note but i'm not sad tomorrow is a new day and i'm feeling very very confident in what i need to do and how i'm gonna write better in the future so it's all good stuff guys all right well i need to go to sleep like i said i keep repeating myself so all right guys as always, I appreciate you so much for taking this journey with me and sharing your life with me in the same way that I share mine with you. So I hope you all had a great holiday weekend. Uh, if you're American, if you're not American, then I just hope you had a great weekend anyway. And uh, you ate some good food. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Good night. Bye.